Hello and welcome back to Guarded Hacking. Today we're going to be taking a look at a malware builder that was acquired by Git1 and then deobfuscated by Draconia. Shout out to both of them and let's take a look at this binary. So looking at the sales thread for this builder, we can see that it's called Uhacker Stealer and it claims to have features of taking a screenshot of the victim's computer stealing from the Chrome passwords, history and cookies recovery. It has an RDP credential stealer and they claim to be undetected by most AVs. That's probably incorrect. Then they also have a Discord token recovery, Telegram session recovery, Bitcoin and Ethereum clipper, and then a download file from URL and add Windows Defender exclusions, all for the cheap, cheap price of $50. Of course, as I've pointed out in a few videos, the coder is not responsible for your actions with this sof software as it is made for educational purposes only. Obviously that doesn't protect you in court, but you know, why not add it in there? Maybe it'll work. So the builder is written in .NET. It was originally packed with Enigma protector, but with the way Enig Enigma protector works, it doesn't successfully protect .NET binaries. So Draconia was kind enough to have dumped this and I have a copy of the original binary with all of the correct code. So because it's a .NET binary, we'll be opening it, opening it up in DNSpy and looking at it in DNSpy, we see three main classes here. We see key auth, window stealer and window stealer properties. The properties here is just properties for the form. This is one form and this is a second form so the key auth is the login for the builder so when you open the builder it'll ask you to log in and i'll be using key auth to handle that login for a user and then once you've logged in you'll see the window sealer form which will allow you to build a copy of the malware looking at the form one within the window sealer class we see the build function here and it's taking all of the different inputs that a threat actor can put in for their build and it's going to send a build request to the server which it connects to previously and then it will get a build from the server so it doesn't build locally it re requires an internet connection and requires the seller's build server to be up here we can see the get stream and writing the settings from the builder into the server so i'm going to click on the s here and click on analyze i'm going to look at where it's assigned we see the s is a new tcp client and then i'm going to also look at where it's used so we can see that form one load one initializes the tcp client with this domain so all of the builds will be sent to this server here and it will reply with the correct build for the, uh, the settings that you give it. So let's try to get a build of the malware. Some of you may be wondering, how do you learn malware analysis and how you can do the same as I do in these videos? Well, if you're prepared to put in the hard work and time, then I recommend that you go and check out the amazing content on the Guided Hacking website. There is an insane amount of technical content specifically regarding reverse engineering. So go check out Guided Hacking as your one-stop shop for all things reverse engineering. To bypass the authentication on this builder, I've set a breakpoint on both the login so that I can patch out the login, but I've also set a breakpoint on the form one load one. So this is the builder form once you successfully logged in, where it will do a version check with this pastebin link. And if you don't have the latest version, then it's going to simply just prompt that you should go get the latest version and it'll kill itself. So instead of letting it run through that, I'm also going to patch that out. So we can start the binary within DNSpy with both those breakpoints set and log in with the default credentials. Then we see that we break on the first login function. So I'm going to step over that and where it checks the success of the login, I'm going to change the value to true. And I'll, from there, let the malware continue until it hits our second breakpoint here, where it's going to check the version. And so I'm going to step over these. And then where it does this contains value, I'm going to patch out the returned Boolean. And I'm going to set flag to true. And we can continue. And we see that the builder starts here. 
and it welcomes me in. It says that it's connected to the, to the server and we have the builder here. So I can set a telegram token here and we can check that it failed to connect to it. We also have a few things with the wallet. There's some information about the developer. Keylog ascend time, I'm gonna set this to one and I'll leave the URL as it is. And then I'm just gonna build. Uh, again, another prompt of saying that they aren't responsible for what you do with the tool, but obviously they made a malicious tool and spread it out and sold it for money. And then it prompts me to check my bot creds for the Telegram bot. So I'm going to quickly go and patch a few more things so that it'll successfully give me a build and I'll check back in. So to patch out that issue with the Telegram bot settings, there's another flag here and I'm going to do the exact same that I did previously by just patching out the flag. To receive a build, you do need valid credentials and I do have valid credentials for this builder that's given to me by Git one. So I'm going to use those now to get a build of the malware so i'll check back in once i've done that so i have a build now of the malware and what you'll notice when actually looking at the build is that it's got the pi exe to pi icon and that's exactly what it is it's an exe to pi build with the stub and the actual malware code being written in python which is somewhat unique. I was expecting it because the builder was within .NET to have a .NET payload, but it's just in this Py2exe. So to analyze Py2exe binaries, we first want to extract the Python files from the exe itself. And to do this, I use py in, uh, extractor with the build.exe as the, um, as the input. And you can just download it from this GitHub page. When I run that Python script, it finds a bunch of Python files and we can see that it's given me this folder of all the extracted files. Within it, we see a bunch of different files, but these are all really to do with the modules that are included with this PyTEXE binary. The one that we're most interested in is the stub0.pyc because this is the main code of the malware. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go into our second tool, which is pydumpck. And pydumpck will take this compiled Python code because it's not raw Python, it's .pyc, so it's compiled Python. And we'll take that and we'll go into pydumpck and I've already put it in here so that I can analyze it. And then I will run pydumpck with the stub 0.py and we see that it begins using pycdc to dump the file and after an error it still has successfully dumped the python files and i can go in here and we have our pycdc.py here and i can open this in a code editor and now we have all of the malicious code that is being used within this malware it's quite interesting um this code is incredibly verbose in what it does and it's a good way of learning how malware is written by reading code of a basic language like python so in the next video i'll be reading through this code but in this one i just wanted to cover the builder and how we can extract the Python code from the builder. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next one, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot, and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking, and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.